Okay, so we are going to do our um, force in motion foldable, and um, this one um, gives the students the idea of speed, velocity, and acceleration, and the difference between the three. And so um, what we have are some uh, diagrams. Now, um, these diagrams I found um, in different places on Google. The rest of this I created. Um, what I have my students do in the classroom is I will take a post-it note and I have them make the graph. I have them make the different motion graphs. I have them make a, um, a constant speed, a distance time graph, and then a speed time graph to show um, acceleration. And um, you can have them do a number line and draw a vector to show um, velocity. So, um, all we have to do for this one is fold over like so, and I always like to do this. I always like to just kind of leave, um, I always call it a lip, but I guess maybe it's more of a tab. So I don't fold completely over. Now um, you can do one of two things with that. I use this part for labels. However, students could use this to um, hole punch into a binder if you use a binder system. So it's up to you, but I like to, personally when I'm doing um, something like this, I like to um, do that piece. So um, all we have to do is cut out these nine pieces and then we will glue them into the appropriate categories. Okay, so I have my little pieces cut out and um, what I'm gonna do is I will start on this side with speed, then velocity, then acceleration, because one builds upon the other. And so um, when they are in the sixth grade, I think it's pretty much standard fifth or sixth grade, they should know the formula and have solved problems for speed. Um, now, velocity is not tricky. However, um, they have to understand that um, velocity has um, indicates a direction. So if you do not have a direction indicated, you're only looking at speed. Now, um, initially when I heard this, um, I went through a training and I was a little contrary because I didn't understand it and you really don't understand something until you have to teach it. And once I had to teach it, then I, it, it all made sense. If you are given a graph like this, for example, there is no direction indicated. So this is simply speed. So it's important, what I realized after teaching this, it is important to introduce eighth graders to the concept of a vector so that they, they know that there's a direction because unless you have a word problem that explicitly states the direction you are moving, you do not have velocity, you only have speed. So that's why um, we, we need to kind of show them what a vector is and talk about vectors. And um, as a side note, they get it, they know what a vector is because all you have to do is mention Despicable Me, and you can talk about Vector, and he has that little phrase, you know, uh, something about, I can't remember what it is he says, I commit crime with direction and magnitude, I can't remember what exactly what it says, but talk to them about Despicable Me and Vector, and it will all make perfect, beautiful sense to them. Whoa, this one's gonna be cutting it close. No worries. Um, and you can, you know, change your images as you like. That's why I kind of like post-it notes. I like three by three post-it notes for this, for them to go ahead and draw the graphs themselves because they're um, even. But um, for the sake of what we're doing, we'll, we get, we'll get the idea. So now we've got speed, we've got velocity, we've got a vector representing velocity. We have a constant speed. Be and, and we need to have a constant speed in this regard because if there's a change in speed, we are no longer talking about speed, we're talking about acceleration. So that's important, I believe, for um, kids to understand. I think it makes it a little more concrete in their mind. Now, 
for each piece, so we've got acceleration down here, um, for each piece, I've also indicated the formula. Yeah, I could have scooched that over a little bit, but um, no worries. Now, um, you could do any kind of graph that you would like. This is just a picture that I found on Google Images, I think. I don't know where I found it. Um, but I would probably do something. I would make a graph or I would use a graph that you have used in your instruction or that you plan on using in your instruction and I so so the motion graph that I would use for acceleration would be something that I was going to directly teach um, constant speed is something that we directly teach so um, in regard to your motion graph make sure that you um, are not just throwing something random out there. Make the motion graph for acceleration meaningful for the kids. So now what we're going to do is, I'm going to turn this upside down because I'm just going to cut up to the fold. And then on the top, very top of this, I'm going to glue the formulas for each. Um, and then the rest of this you can use to take notes, you can practice motion graphs, you can do math problems, whatever it is you feel like you need to do. It's all up to you. You may use these in any fashion that you like. So formula for acceleration. Now um, there is a more advanced formula for acceleration and um, <laughs> it is not coming to me now. I kind of blocked that one out of my mind. Um, change in speed over the change in time, you know, something like that. Um, you can use that if that is part of your um, strand or your readiness standard or whatever your standard is, whether it's Common Core or whether it's a TEAK, whatever you need to do. But for eighth graders in science, they use, in order to find acceleration, they use F equal MA. So we're really just talking about um, force and mass is how we determine acceleration. We don't get into the advanced components. Um, so. Uh, formula for speed right here speed equal distance divided by time and then finally um, what I put uh, just simply is velocity is um, speed equals distance divided by time and direction now in the next piece that we're going to do the next the next uh, foldable that we're going to do before we move into the Newton's laws foldable um, I'm going to show you some formula triangles because when we teach this, the time of year that we teach um, speed, velocity, and acceleration, we are so used to, as adults, we're so used to understanding that a fraction is a division problem. However, most eighth graders um, are not looking at fractions as division problems. Um, or at least in my experience, I shouldn't say that I, I can't speak for everybody. Um, they are still doing long division. So um, when I was teaching this, I realized that and I made a, a little manipulative to help them um, with this part right here because usually we'll do a distance time triangle, a speed distance time triangle, or an F equal MA triangle. But you have to understand not all of your kids understand that this is a division problem and they're not going to be able to manipulate it algebraically. They're not there yet. They haven't had the skill. So the next foldable that we will um, do, it's not really a foldable, just a manipulative, is um, a uh, couple of triangles that will help um, your kiddos understand, <laughs> give them the long division way of doing it instead of um, the fraction, the algebraic way. So um, there is our force and motion foldable. You will be able to find these handouts um, to utilize at teachingdiva.com under resources and um, they will be in a Word document form so you can change them as you need to and um, utilize any kind of motion graph um, or vector that is relevant to your teaching. I hope you guys found this useful and I will see you next time.